computer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can we play the first video? Okay. Share screen. Just give me a moment. And that is. Okay, so the, the video didn't play as well as we'd hoped it would play. Um, but it was basically an introduction to the April Action Remembrance um, and saying that we would be uh, using our Facebook page to encourage people to gather together and share photos and memories of, of, of the events over the last couple of years. So welcome to the Brixton's um, Act of Remembrance. Uh, this is an Act of Remembrance that we've held for the last, uh, this is the 11th year that we've been doing it. Um, the actual bomb took place on the 17th of April 1999. Um, I just want to say first of all thanks to all the, um, the local authorities that we've worked with, um, the, the, the Lambeth mayors, the uh, Tower Hamlets mayors, the Westminster uh, Lord Mayor of Westminster, the local police, um, the local community members um, and all our volunteers. Um, I'm also going to remember Paul uh, who sadly one of our volunteers that we lost uh, at the end of last month, um, he, he is with in, within our thoughts. So, 21 years ago, an L bomber decided to uh, go on a, a campaign to stir up fear and, and hatred within the communities. And his plan was to target communities with nail bombs. The first nail bomb was targeted at the Black community of Brick, Brick, Brixton, uh, and it went off in Brixton Market. It actually, injured 47 people. Luckily, there were no fatalities, although the youngest victim was, uh, or the youngest uh, a, a person injured was a toddler that received, uh, had a nail in its, in its skull. Um, the second um, uh, nail bomb happened in Brick Lane. And this time, um, it, was, um, it was actually found in the street. Someone put it in the boot of the car, drove it around the corner to um, hand it into the police. Luckily, as they crossed the road, the bomb exploded in the car and the car contained the explosion. So uh, not as many people were hurt, but there were 13 people who were injured in, in Brick Lane. And that included some of the people from the sweet and spicy restaurant, the family members working there. A week later on Friday, the 30th of, uh, of April um, was the third bomb. And this time the bomber went into the Apple Duncan uh, pub put the, uh, the bag down at the bar, asked someone to watch his bag and his, and his drink whilst he went to the cash machine. And obviously he never came back, but the bomb exploded and killed three people, which was Andrew Dykes, uh, John Light and Nick Moore, uh, and injured about 150 people. So each year in Soho, there's always been an act of remembrance where fat friends and family gather in St. Anne's Gardens. As far as I'm aware, um, Brixton and Brick Lane did a first anniversary, but then there was a long period of time where there were no acts of remembrance in those two areas. Coming up to the 10th anniversary, there was um, a, a magazine article that basically said, um, the anniversaries cause pain and suffering, the communities don't care, um, so we should play these anniversaries down. And I just thought that was wrong, and that's how we came into uh, setting up 172430. 
Um, the idea was to create an online space where people can get together, share their experiences and reconnect and stay connected with each other. Um, over 2000 people joined the group within the first month and it's been um, you know, a, a point for us to go back to those people uh, and whenever we're planning anything within the communities. So I'm now going to pass back over to Jordan who's going to play the next video which is about Brick Snacks and Remembrance. No, that's the April one. Okay, hold on. It's okay. Brixton. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Light the three candles. Do you want to put them onto the candles? I've got you, Jordan, on my main screen. So do you want me to share that? Yeah. All right, hold on. Yeah. Um, share screen. Share. Oops. Oh, no. Oops, hold on. Uh, stop share. Sorry. It's okay. It's great. Shit. Why is this doing? Yeah, hold on. Oh. Oh, so that's why. Okay. Uh. I think we're not going to be able to do it, are we? No. Um, stop share. 
Yeah, it's not it's not allowing me to do that. I apologize. But if everyone um chooses that that um and Mark, if you walk over there, oh no, because that's on mute. Um, yeah. Um, so. Um, so we've yeah. lit the three candles, yeah. um, and now I invite us all to take a, a moment silence just to remember John Light, Nick Moore, Andrea Dykes, Cinders, or David Morley, who was the barman who survived the Admiral London but was killed five years later, Tommy Douglas, and Paul Squidgley. Thank you very much. So we now uh, play another video that we've put together. That's the long one. Hello, welcome to my home. My name is Mark Healy and I'm the founder of 172430 National Hate Crime Awareness Week. It's a small anti-hate crime charity that I run from my home that was set up 11 years ago as a Facebook group to mark the 10th anniversary of the London nail bomb attacks on Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho. I read an article in a magazine that said the anniversaries cause pain and suffering and the people don't care and therefore we should play these anniversaries down and I just thought that was wrong which is why I set up the Facebook group in the first place. I chose the name 172430 because I wanted to remind people of the dates of the three attacks. 17th of April in Brixton when a bomb was targeted against the black community. 24th of April when a, a bomb was targeted against the Asian community of Brick Lane and the 3rd of April where a bomb was targeted against the gay community of Soho. I think it's really important that we do what we can to bring these communities together and to work together to tackle all forms of hate crime. Every year, without fail since 1999, the friends and family of those killed and injured have gathered in Soho to remember their loved ones. We believe it's important to remember those we've lost and also to stand in solidarity with those who need our ongoing support to ensure our communities don't forget what happened to make sure it never happens again. So one of the things our charity does is bring together a team of volunteers who help us organise the April Action Remembrance. Each year we go down to Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho and light three candles representing the three communities that were attacked in memory of the three people who, die, who died in the Apple Duncan bombing. John Light, Nick Moore, and Andrea Dykes. Our volunteers give out hate crime information. We take the time to talk to people and listen to their experiences. We think it's important to signpost people to the advice and support services that are available, to encourage people to report hate crime, to encourage our communities to come together and say there's no place for hate in our communities, to make our communities safer places for everybody. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, we can't meet up with each other in person, but we can still be with each other in spirit, and we can definitely uh, connect with each other online. The idea behind the Facebook group was really quite simple. We just wanted to create an online space where people could come together to share photos and memories and stay in touch with each other. It's a time for great sorrow, but also a time for hope.
Watching the news, it's easy to get overwhelmed with fear and sadness as we watch the world respond to this terrible virus that's taking our loved ones away. No words can uh, just do justice to the sense of pain inflicted across all our communities. We feel it too with the loss of our dear friend Paul. But in every situation, there's an opportunity for good people to step forward to help make things better. We saw this after the nail bomb attacks 21 years ago, after 9-11 and 7-7, after London Bridge, Westminster Bridge, Manchester Arena, Christchurch, the Finsbury Park Mosque. And now we're seeing it as the world comes together to respond to the coronavirus. Millions upon millions of people are working together for the health and well-being of their communities. Thousands upon thousands of mutual aid groups have been set up across the world to help those in need. Whilst we are forced to socially distance ourselves, people are finding ways to use social media to connect with each other online in ways that we'd never imagined before. We certainly didn't imagine we'd be organising the April Acts Remembrance this way this year which hopefully gives everybody some hope. We will get through these challenging times and we will be together afterwards much stronger than ever before. Please stay safe, be well, and look after those you can without putting yourselves at risk. Thank you. Finally, we're going to give you uh, two helpline numbers. The first one is for the Samaritans. Uh, their number is 116123. They're a great organisation. They're free to call and they're open 24 hours a day. So you can call them morning, noon or night. That's 116123 for the Samaritans. They'll be happy to talk to you. Another helpline number that we're going to give you is the switchboard. That's the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual and Transgendered helpline, offering calm words when you need them most. Their helpline number is 0300 330 That's 0300 330 Unfortunately, the audio cut off at that point, so. <laughs> okay, stop sharing. Okay. And now we're going to show a poem. Um, Mark, do you want to introduce it? So this, uh, every year, the Moore family, Terry from the Moore family writes a poem on behalf of Nick Moore. Um, she's written some and read some wonderful poems in the past. Uh, and this is the poem she's written for this year. Okay. Share screen, share. It's April. And in normal times, I write a poem about three dreadful crimes. The London nail bomb attacks. I'm sure you know what happened in Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho. Every year with love and with pride, I've been there to remember the day Nick died. But this year is different. No one will be there to lay flowers or light candles or say a prayer. So here is a poem to the world from me about the present catastrophe. I'd like to believe that every cloud with a lining of silver is endowed, that the means can be justified by the end and every stranger a prospective friend. This recent crisis has given us cause to remember troubled times and pause, to think of sacrifices made by heroes in other crises that nobody chose. And that fighting spirit rises again to lessen the blow and ease the pain. Faith in humankind is restored as we pray for victims at home and abroad. We redefine the words want and need and suffer consequences of collective greed. The health of our nation is dependent on people who many look down upon. 
There are lessons to learn, but as we know, from previous tragedies is not always so. We show solidarity in this latest fight, with a round of applause on Thursday night. Apart from that, we lock the door, doing our bit to help win this war. Communities cooperate to deliver supplies. Love for our neighbours is on the rise. But history repeats itself, sad to say. And when this crisis has passed away, will we remember the promises we made to be less selfish? Or will memories fade? Will we have equality written in law? Or will not much change for the rich and the poor? Our deepest instincts make us have a go when something threatens our status quo. But will we put ourselves out in the years to come or go back to normal when the shouting's done? I would never belittle the sacrifices made or undermine the courage displayed, but I wish we could salvage some of the goodwill to continue to help the poor and the ill to work for a world that is just and fair, for true work to be recognised everywhere. The march of progress can be painfully slow. We know this from Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho, but just as we continue to strive to keep the flame of justice alive, the unsung heroes carry on until peace prevail and hate is gone. We lost loved ones, we share the pain, and know that things can never be the same again. Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho, we remember what happened 21 years ago to Nick, John, Andrea and Cinders. From everyone who loved you, we still miss you so. It's April. Oops. So that brings us to the end of the uh, Brixton uh, Acts of Remembrance. So um, now, if people want to have a conversation, you're quite welcome to uh, for people to say a few words. So if you need to turn your microphones back on. And this bit we won't put out with the video. We'll just keep this. Should I? I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop the recording and do a separate recording for this portion. So just give me. Okay. A